Greer and Decima have been making short work of us Wayfinders, but today I've got all the advice you need to topple these Titans. For this meta, you'll have 15 minutes to take Decima down alongside Greer, and both of these bosses need to die within 30 seconds of each other, or the alive one will revive the defeated one. I'm unsure of what the level of health is restored to, but this DPS check timer can be very tight as of the current balance and general public knowledge, so it is very important to not mess the finishing blows up. Now, let's get to Decima's details and then Greer. Decima the Stormsinger spawns here in the northeast of Janthir Sintry between the fourth blood tree and Kindle Baron's points of interests. She's also the more straightforward boss as well as the more melee friendly. So if you struggle with mechanics, especially as a melee player, then I would prioritize getting to her. As a public service announcement though, if rebalancing is called for by the commanders and no one else is going, please be the change you want to see in the world. Teamwork makes the dream work. Decima is the queen of slamming AoEs. She's got some normal circles to watch out for, but one of the most consistent deadliest ones is this wave pattern fist slam with electricity pulse that she does. You can see the first one here in this attempt takes out five of our group immediately. One thing I've noticed in my testing is whether I used my dodge roll or my spellbreaker guard ability, the center is instantaneous death. You can see on this later attempt, I thought I knew better, perfectly evade, and you can even see multiple evade messages pop up, but I still go down like a sack of potatoes. You absolutely need to avoid the center zone of this electrical slam, and if you do that, it's a simple timing to dodge. Just be sure not to dodge underneath her as she has a constant AOE aura underneath her that really hurts. Decima also uses an inner outer AOE slam to control the arena, one typically after the other, so always be ready when you see the first one coming. The inner slam will show a wave pattern emanating from her before she jumps into the air and slams down, rock spikes exploding out of the ground around her. The outer AoE ring will be a massive area around her, with the safe area being closer to her before spikes explode out of the ground around. These happen in both inner outer and outer inner configurations. The inner stomp attack can also become supercharged later in the fight, but we'll touch on that later. Now the third primary mechanic that occurs is what I like to call red beam green beam. During the fight, Decimil will aim green line beam attacks and red line beam attacks. The green ones have the stack marker and arrows on them, and you're going to want to make sure people are standing in this to nullify the effects of it hitting the conduits around her. The red beams are spicy, dangerous, and contain X's to indicate you do not want to stand in them, so don't. I have a bit of speculation that the green beams when not stood in will awaken the conduits, which gives her this stacking empowered buff that states it increases Decima's outgoing damage with stacking intensity. The red beams just hurt. I also believe, as you can see in this footage here, that we're supposed to be able to see the conduits and the order that they will be targeted at, at all times. I only had this pop up a few times and it was random in nature, so I'm not sure if this is a simple bug that can be fixed or if it's a too many models in the area kind of engine limitation, but it does make this mechanic less ideal to deal with. If we could see the orders, I would recommend having specific people set to specific numbers. As it stands, I think maybe having specific teams set to general quadrants like Northwest or Southwest kind of thing would be ideal if you're trying to organize it, although I think that would only work for more dedicated groups. That's a bit much for a pickup group. I'll also say we had literally zero coordination or explanation for standing in the green beams, and the increased damage output really did not seem to affect us much. As you can see during some of my footage here, people mostly only go down when they stand in stuff they shouldn't. It's not like she's one shot cleaving people with auto attacks here. Now, you remember the supercharged attack that I mentioned earlier? Well, at 75% and 25%, Decima is going to initiate a phase change, indicated by the massive text appearing at the top of the screen saying Decima is charging for a massive attack, and her defiance bar appears. Your goal is to break her defiance bar multiple times based on how many stacks of this blue shield buff are left. So, at this 25% phase example, her shield is at 6, so we break her defiance bar six times to stop the supercharged attacks. Both the times I saw, 
It was five times at 75% and six times at 25%. Now, once you clear her defiance bar at these phase changes, they'll call for the Janthier Wilds patented Journeykin spin. So you'll need to mount up on your war claw and toss your harpoon and then start running clockwise around the boss until your group gets enough wraps to trip her up and start the process all over again. At 10%, she will do her super massive charge over and over again, but this time there is no defiance bar to break and you're just going to have to dodge the attack. As you can see in this footage here, I fail to do so. It's attached to her jump stop and I rolled for movement away from her. I didn't actually roll to dodge the attack because I didn't realize a massive wave of death was about to pulse out as well. The shock wave is going to pulse out every single time she does her jump stomp after 10%. The good news is that her beams completely stop at this point so you just need to concentrate on staying alive. That's everything for Decima. You just want to make sure to kill her within 30 seconds of Greer, so coordination is required. Greer's phase changes are a bit longer than Decima's, so in my experience, Decima is always ahead of Greer. Greer is the more difficult of the two, in my opinion. Greer spawns in the southwest of the map on the infested Quag point of interest. Greer's biggest, most constant thing that's going to drag the fight for you is his boon corruptions. He has a constant aura of rot underneath of him, similar to Decima's, but this one is going to corrupt your boons if you stand in it, as well as many things in his fight dropping this boon corruption rot aura. So, Condi Cleanse and an overkill of boons cannot hurt you during the Greer fight. Now he has a few basic attacks, like a frontal AoE cleave swipe, as well as a AoE triple stomp that he does, nicely illustrated back to back here. You can also see that he has a stack mechanic as well, where he'll shoot out branches underneath the primary target of it. If you see the stack marker, just stack up to distribute the damage so everybody can survive. Like Decima, he is also going to phase at 75% and 25%. When he phases, he will go invulnerable, and eight mobs will spawn all around him, and you're going to enter bullet hell. You need to kill all eight titan spawn that he summons in order to push the phase to the next step, which will be a defiance break, followed by the war claw. Greer is not going to make this easy for you, however. The entire time he is in this phase, he is going to be dropping constant puddles of rot aura that will corrupt your boons, and spewing out an endless barrage of rot projectiles that will also corrupt your boons and deal damage to you on impact. So if you're a melee player, get ready to dance. Once you take down all eight titan spawn, you'll have to break through his one defiance bar and then enter the war claw clockwise spin to win. Immediately after you finish the war claw phase, he's going to throw an absolute fit and just begin hammering you with loads of poison bolt barrages that leave behind a poison field. Luckily, these ones do not corrupt your boons, but they still don't feel good to stand in. These poison bubbles are actually targeted at specific players, so if you have an intensely coordinated group, you could theoretically do very tight stacking and significantly reduce the amount of floor space that he's denying your group. Though I can't recommend that to pugs flat out because if you all stack up and a few people miss the dodge, it's going to hurt a ton. Now he's also going to start putting out multiple stack markers very rapidly after the first phase. So your situational awareness needs to be on point. He's also going to start doing this double-sided AOE maneuver where he spins through the air and then sends out a shockwave of boon corrupting rot branches outwards based on that pattern. There's always going to be two safe sides, though your ability to get into one of the little slices depends on how many puddles are around it. In addition, you need to pay attention to these branches because they will hang around for the 20 seconds or so until he does the same move again. There will be a few smaller gaps in addition to the big gap once the AoE has pulsed out in case you need an exit or entrance. Just be careful. If you bump into the branches, they will knock you around for a second, as well as corrupt some of your boons. He's going to use all of these attacks constantly until you get him down to 25%. At 25%, he will again summon eight more titan spawn, and you'll have to defeat them, break his defiance bar, and do a war claw spin to win once more. But don't worry, this fight still has plenty more chaos to add in. 
after you push him past his 25% phase in vulnerability, some elite adds are going to spawn to make the fight even more chaotic. In this clear of it, we ignored them, which is probably the ideal thing to do for now as the DPS checks are pretty tight. I can't say whether or not they respawn as we never really fully cleared them. When your group finally presses him down to 10%, several new things will happen compared to before. He is now going to begin pushing out three stack markers all at the same time. He's also going to gain a new channel ability where he's pushing out boon corrupting rot clouds that flow out in every direction from him at various intervals while he channels. So you need to try and look out for the red outlined circles flowing through all of the rot that is already likely surrounding him. Once you've dodged those, he's going to start hitting you with even more rot auras on the outside perimeter of his range. As you see here, these arrows indicate the linear path the branches will take once he lets loose his assault, and then the circle is going to indicate where the aura will linger. I slowed this footage down so we can clearly see the branches going from him over to the final AoE area. At this point, you just focus on DPSing him down within 30 seconds of Decima, and then you're golden. And for some more general gameplay tips to make you golden in Janthier Wilds, I've got this video right here ready and waiting just for you. Don't tell the other adventurers.